Tuesday and we're live. Hope you guys can hear me because it was brought to my attention that there's kind of like some reverb or something in the last video. And so I'm hoping to avoid that today it's tuesday and i hope you guys are having an awesome awesome one Whoop. almost spilled stuff but we may have survived if you guys are new here hi hello what's up i'm erica and um, my husband's usually with me but he is out cutting some steak for our um, our clear coasters and things. He even came out with a new one. It's a stingray. I'm going to have it uploaded to dirt. Very excited about it. What's up, Bruce? How you doing? Hey, Gail. So, today is Tuesday, so we're going to refer to the box to choose our colors. Kind of nervous about it, but We'll see what happens. If you haven't seen this series before, um, this is a box of colors from Sarah Renee Clark. She came up with these color swatch sets and I'm going to pull a card at random and do a painting based on the colors that are in that card. And I, so I have to pick a card so you guys are going to have to tell me when to stop. The first stop that I see, I will stop my this. But no one's telling me to stop. Gotcha, Bruce. Oh my goodness, what a beautiful palette you chose. Put these away so I don't break them. This is a gorgeous palette. So we have a dark blue, a teal, a turquoise, a white, an apricot, and a chocolate. Those are some awesome colors. I'm going to go and pick some pigments real quick based on the palettes. So you guys can watch puppies till I get back. This is actually going to be an easy palette to pick out, I feel like. If they're going to leave, that's no fun. So I got a dark blue, a teal, and I a turquoise, white, apricot, and chocolate. What big boy you want up on your table? boy. Come here. Come here. Okay. Back to color choosing. Bowie, lay down.
नहीं चाहिए blue, teal, turquoise, apricot, white, and chocolate. So I have my resin mixed. I may go ahead and mix it just a little bit more since we're not going to be using it quite yet. Whoa, I almost spilled it. We're good though. I am using my Istoyo stand mixer. I don't know if they have the um, the stand part on the website yet, but this little bad boy saves me so much time because I can just set it and forget it. Do you guys remember those old, was it a rotisserie commercial where they were like, set it and forget it? Did I just age myself? Probably. Okay. So the dark blue, I'm using a phthalo blue from Just Resin. The teal, I'm using the limited edition midnight blue, which now is called Dark Storm from Just Resin. The turquoise, I'm gonna use Breakfast at Tiffany's. The white, I'm using Pearl White Luster from Color Passion. Apricot, I'm gonna use Peach. Even though this apricot looks beige, should I change it from apricot to beige? What do you guys think? And then the chocolate, I'm gonna use the Illumilite dye because it's the only brown that I have open in this moment. Maybe I can just drop a bit of the brown into the apricot and make something that's more of a beigey peach color. So that's my plan. So, one, two, three, four, six colors. That is a full palette, you guys. I have a class um, coming up in, um, what's that place? Seguin. Soon. Um, that is on color theory and doing oceans. So, if you're interested in that class. Um, get with Rhonda at RK3. I have a class here in Dallas coming up where I will also go over some color theory. It's on May 13th. If you guys have time to join me here in Dallas, Texas, I had a couple people had to cancel last minute. So I have a couple seats still open if you're interested. And if you bring a buddy, you get a discount. So awesome. Charlotte, um, if I mix this beige color and it doesn't really turn out uh, like I want it to, then I'll just, I'll switch over to a copper. I'm trying to stay as true to the, um, the palette that I pulled as possible, but I agree with these colors, a copper would look super nice. 
what's up, what's up, you guys? Thank you for coming in and watching what I'm doing today. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. If you could, leave me a thumbs up. This is an 18 inch round. I made 10 ounces. Should be enough. Have an awesome day at work, Bruce. All right, I'm not exactly sure what application I'm gonna do, so I'm putting a lot of the colors like even-ish in quantity of how much resin I'm dedicating to that color. It's probably a bad thing, so I'm gonna probably mix it around a little bit. So the white, I'm gonna have a fair amount of that. So this is one of the fuller cups. I'm gonna do white with that one. And then there's a darker teal. I think the limited edition, I'm gonna have more of that one. And the blue. I think the least color is gonna be the peachy apricot beige. And the brown. So I'm going to add the Kind of leftover amounts to the other colors, so I'm not mixing up more of a color that than I really need. So the first color I'm mixing up is Pearl White Luster. It's by Color Passion. It's a really nice, slightly shimmery white color, but it's very slight shimmer. So it's not so much a sparkly color like most metallics. So it just looks mostly white, but with a very slight hint of a shimmer. It's like the difference in a gloss and a matte, and somewhere in the middle is a satin. This would be the equivalent to that. It's not satin, but that's kind of where it would fall in the range. You can barely see any shimmer, if at all, even in the camera. Next color I'm mixing up is the limited edition Midnight, which now uh, on the website is called Dark Storm. This is a beautiful color. If you like the Midnight Blue color from Just Resin, then you'll really like this one. It's like a deep, tealy color, very oceanic, which is probably why I like it. But that's just a delicious color. The next one is a phthalo blue or a patello blue. do a little bit less of these two and then use the, the difference as like a skim coat. So phthalo blue is uh, translucent. So you're going to be able to slightly see through it. This one has no shimmer to it at all. So it's called a flat or a basic pigment paste. Really nice color. Now it makes me want to be doing a beach. But I don't think that's possible with what we got going on here. But maybe. 
maybe I can turn it into a beach. I just don't know where I would. I don't know where I would add the brown and the peach if I did a beach. Okay, so let's do the brown. And then I'll use some of this to make my apricot color. It's probably gonna look almost black on camera, but you can see it here on the sides, the brown that it turns. Now then, this is peach from Just Resin. It's really nice for like Easter colors spring colors. If you guys don't know, I also uh, do custom colors for people. If you have a color that you can't find among my 800 other colors, then you can order a custom one. Okay, so that was probably a bit too much brown, but we'll see. Nope, melted right in there. I don't wanna use too much of my brown to make this color, so I may have to put some of the actual color in. Ugh. My gloves are just I think I'm pretty close. Tell me what you guys think. What's up, Dances with Art Farts? Gail at Mac. Crystal Kitty, I haven't seen you in a while. How are things? You found me the perfect color for a match. Just ask her. Yay, I'm so glad. I got close. So this beige I've made is still kind of warm. These are a bit more mauve -y. I think it's close, but... Not really there yet. I'm not going to spend too much time trying to color match this. It's going to be a close enough count situation. Good, thank you for asking, and I'm glad things are better with you as well. It's always nice to hear that things are better than when they were at a difficult time. What's up, Ellen? How are you doing? All right, that's the last bit of another color I'm going to mix into this because I don't want to waste any time. And that's our palette. Pearl Luster from Color Passion, Dark Storm from Just Resin, Thalo Blue from Just Resin, Breakfast at Tiffany's from Just Resin, a beigey apricot, that's a combination of Illumilite, Brown, Dye, and Just Resin, Peach, and then the Illumilite Brown Dye Solo. All these colors, I swear all I wanna do is an ocean. But what do you guys think I should do in terms of application for these colors? I know that a lot of people are gonna be like, so why? Which I'll absolutely do. I just wanna make sure that that's what we're, we're all thinking here today. So I have some resin down here. I'm just gonna use it as kind of a skim coat. And doing a skim coat just means that the color resin that I, I'm gonna put on top of it is just gonna be able to move more easily on the surface. Ocean. I can see if I can do an ocean.
I left my thumbs up. Please support the channel. Evelyn, I appreciate you saying that so much. Seascapes and oceans. I just don't know how I'm going to incorporate these brown and apricot colors. But I'm not afraid of doing a seascape. So let me just The white that I mixed up is a base cell, so I don't know how it's going to react, but let's do it. Whew. Okay, so we're going to do an ocean. I'm not using the right colors for it, but what we're gonna do it. So I'm going to kind of, I think just dribble in some of the brown and this is just for background. Because if you look in an ocean, there's rock formations and coral and kind of deep spots. So we're just going to make that what this is. Just trust the process currently in this moment. This will be the first time I've done this this way. So Be patient. And if it doesn't turn out, then I'll just try it again. Oh, Emily, that's such a kind thing to say. Thank you so much for the kind words. Make my day, you did. Okay. So, if you look at an ocean, then the more shallow areas are going to be where your lighter colors and your more green focused colors are because what's happening is your eyes being green because the blue from the water and the yellowish color from the sand are going to make kind of a greener color. Ergo, your lighter colors are going to be closer to the surface or where the shallower areas are. I'm going to pretend there's a shallow area right there and right here. I'm hoping some of the brown comes through because I only have one translucent color. I have no transparent colors. So that underpainting may have been not so necessary, but if I had clearer translucent colors, it would be very necessary to create depth in a piece. And I wouldn't have made so much white. We'll find out together. Y'all just have to trust me on this part. This is all background that I'm going to just lightly skim the top and blend together. Put a bit of motion into it. So it looks wavy. Get you guys in closer. Nope. Tiffany popping through looks really good. I'm probably going to add some more of that because it, at this point, just looks like waves, like undertow waves. I'm very much here for undertow waves.
So you don't want to do too much of this manipulating. You don't want to start mixing the colors fully together. You're just creating some motion in the ocean, quite literally. Now, we can't see any of the brown anymore, so I'll have to figure out how to reincorporate those. I like it already has a painted look to it. it. It really does have a painted look to it, doesn't it? Now, the next bit is typically um, where I would do the actual waves, the white. But with this, I need to figure out how to put the brown in before I can worry about the white. The white really needs to be the last thing applied. So, let's see. Sit with some heat and see what's happening. I don't want to thin it out too much right now because if I do a like a torch and tilt or if I heat it and tilt it a lot then I don't want the resin to get too hot and too thin so I wonder what happens if I just kind of blend in some brown I mean, even if it's not presenting as brown, I'm using it in the piece, so. Let's just make the brown kind of more of the deep. The brown that I'm using is translucent, so that's probably why it's not showing as brown when I have it over all of these blues, because it's kind of giving not brown. That's okay with me. So, let's see. I'm just gonna keep this dark ocean motion down here. Very awesome, Neil. Thank you so much. I'm digging the brown, especially in, I don't know if I can get this up to you guys. Hold on. Like it's creating some interesting color variations, some secondary colors because it's playing with all those blues. Very digging it. And in fact, I feel like where the brown goes over the breakfast at Tiffany's, it's where it's making some of the most awesome. Look. Like, I want to do this. Look how beautiful these colors are next to each other. How beautiful. Don't know if it fits in my ocean, so I don't know if I'm going to keep it. But how gorgeous. Y'all let me know if I need to let this live or not. If I need to put more of it or not. into that look right there. It 
almost shows like as purple in some areas. Y'all remind me next time I try to do abalone to just use brown. Hi Dawn, how are you doing? It's so difficult when you see something that you like in a piece and it doesn't really make sense for the piece itself, but you just like it enough to where you kind of just go with it. This is going to be just a very abstract, oceanic look and vibe, I think. I need to do a piece like with the browns and the Tiffany. I think if I was gonna do a piece piece trailer, I would take the the brown, the Tiffany, and the dark storm. I think those together are what's giving me the look that I'm kind of talking about here. No idea what I'm gonna do with the peach. to show you guys again it's almost like purple now that actually may be because of the phthalo that's in there so that may be where that's come from actually all right I'm gonna do a little bit more of that over here it's like a kelp forest, I can see that. Maybe I'll do a kelp forest. I'll have to do some research. So I'm just skimming along the, the top to kind of create this soft blend of colors. Way more action than I would usually do for an ocean. But while we're doing an ocean, it's not really an ocean. It's kind of like an ocean derivative. You might be able to do that, Clara. So, okay. So, Well, thank you, Dawn. I appreciate that. And here I thought I was just making a mockery of this painting. You guys hear a whole bunch of ruckus in the background? My building's doing something, and there's a massive crane. Um, I would turn it to kelp forest, but I don't have enough. I don't have enough of the base colors that I used to pull the sand area in. And maybe ultimately that's what I'll do with the beige. We'll see. I may just put it where the sand would usually be because I think that's maybe actually what the oh my goodness, I've forgotten the word. The reference, that's a word. I think that's actually why the reference has that color. Whew. All right, I don't know which way I'm gonna go with these waves. Cause I'm not using the proper resin or the proper pigments. Neither of those things. We'll see what happens. Let me see what happens in a second. I'm not expecting too many weight like cells to pop up on this and ah! 
Hey, hey, hey. And the reason why is because um, the white that I'm using is a base cell and not a top cell. It is currently going to be manipulated onto the top of everything else. And the resin I usually don't use for oceans. But we'll see. Let's preheat a little bit. I love how it's just moving everything back, like I'm photo editing, like I'm face tuning my ocean. It's taking all the lines of everything before it. back into what we have here. It'll just self-level into it. So I could use the last shade as sand. The white and the light tail almost look like sky now. Yeah, it's very um, not ocean. So I may change it up. may just turn it into a sideways piece and by may I mean I'm about to change it into just a sideways piece maybe a kelp piece like you guys were talking about because I don't think I'm gonna get the waves I need with these specific pigments that I mix up so we're gonna turn this into possibly kelp horse like you guys mentioned if I can make it work with the resin I have left. And then also possibly something else, who knows? Depends on what I can make happen with what I got left. So let's, let's just cover all of the sand or the board itself. Make sure there's no raw board showing. Like that. Then we're gonna tilt this back this way because we tilted it some in the other direction. So we're gonna hit it with some heat and let it come back down to this side. into this side. I'm not going to do a bunch of the thing yet. I need to add some of the this color down here, the Tiffany. Put some back in this bit. Over here. Doesn't look like amazingness right now, but just give me a second. Trust the process. Trust the process. I'm going to make some white into our breakfast at Tiffany's. And hopefully make a little bit more Tiffany's without having to make more Tiffany. So it's a little bit more mint now, but I think it'll still work for what we're trying to do. Ooh, 
it would make a good snow top mountain. So I'm going to keep the browns kind of on the outside, just like I did before, and then we're just going to swipe with my hand into it. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to try putting just a little bit of peach right here and just see what happens if I kind of bring it in. It doesn't look that bad, so I'm just going to add just dots of peach in some areas. Okay. I was using my hand, but I think I'm going to use some swiping paper so that we get kind of a more consistent flow. And if we don't like it with the swiping paper, then I'll just go back to using my hand. I'm going to take my time pulling. So it looks fun, but you guys tell me if you think I should go back to using just the hand flow. Do we like this look or do we like the hand motion better? So this beige you look doesn't look actually that bad. Okay, we're gonna keep it to a minimum now. I like the loops of white that's kind of in there. And I think adding a little bit more white will brighten it up because it is kind of dark. alternating the direction that I'm swiping in with my hand. You don't want to do this too much because then you're going to just start mixing these colors together. Which, if that's what you're trying to do, go for it. But if you're trying to just do a soft blend of the colors, then Don't add a lot of pressure and try to keep the number of times you go over it to minimum. A lot of this looks like an abalone shell to me. I feel like it needs more white, but I'm open to what you guys suggest. It's almost like if you had a lot of salt water in your eyes for a long time and you couldn't really see very well, and you were looking at a picture of an ocean. Is it weird that I like this like whoosh, look? <laughs> it's very busy for my taste, but um, I'm still not mad at it. Like, definitely more into the less busy area up here than back here. 
but I don't want to do too much to it that it makes it busy. And so I also left patches where the um, a first application was because I, I kind of like what it looks like when it is just looped around. I agree, it, the peach did bring out a little bit of green. To be quite honest, I didn't think that the peach would play well with the rest of it. I've never really had good luck with the peach or any sort of beige, brown, tan, anything. Oh, let me show you what's happening. So that's been happening since six o'clock. It's exciting, it's fun. Who needs sleep? What is sleep? Okay. It does look starry night-ish, which was suggested back in the beginning. Surprise, I was gonna do this the whole time, JK. So, green abalone veneer, I'll take it. So, I was toying with the idea of spritzing some alcohol on it. I was toying with the idea of even flecking white at it just to make it look more starry night-ish, but those flecks aren't gonna get swirled in like they are in starry night for real. Um, but I'm open to leaving it alone if that's what y'all think is best. I wish you guys could see it in person. It looks more like this in person. Like the colors are brighter than what the first view was. So you guys just, what do you think? Do more to it or let it live? Come on, it's just your dad. I want that on my floor and my counters. Evelyn, let's do it. Let it live. Sounds like the lives have it. I'll tell you what, I was very excited when I saw the palette, very concerned when I had to put in the brown and the apricot, but I'll tell you what, it surprised me how it turned out. Application's busy for my taste, but I still think it works. Love, love, love the, the movement. Ooh, Kim, that's a good idea. We can definitely use this as a background for an, like a painted, hand-painted art piece, which is probably what I'm gonna ultimately end up doing with it because I don't wanna waste what's happening. And I think the ombre-ish from like darker to lighter will work really well for a hand-painted piece or even a stencil piece. Um, Clara is currently listing all the colors that I used so that you guys can just click the link in the live chat if you would like to get your hands on some but just to refresh if you can't see the live chat or if this is later or whatever I'll just tell you what I used pearl white luster from color passion this was not in this palette dark storm from just resin peach from just resin phthalo blue from just resin Alumilite brown dye, just resin breakfast at Tiffany's. And that gives you oceanic abalone. But what other kind of abalone would it be if it's not ocean? Anyways, coasters. Was this a pick a color day? I have enough of these two for a coaster. I can probably use some of the fallout for a coaster. It looks like old marble. God, I was like, 
glad we're here. Nothing is glad we're there. Um, I'm not mad at it. And I am so thankful for you guys helping me to know what directions to take. Everyone says hello, Jeffrey. Hello. Not that hello, different hello. All right, um, so we are currently transferring our dust-free zone to not where it was to where it is. And so I don't have a dust-free zone to put this in. So what I'm gonna do is just base it in white. I'm gonna base two of them in white and we're gonna do a smush. Let me turn this so you guys can see what's happening. Okay, so I put some white in between here just for kind of a base of color. And now I'm going to just, some, whoops, it's fine. Sorry. No. So I'm going to smush here. this into my fallout. Ooh, so calico. I realize smushes are acquired. I'll fill in these lighter bits, but they, I don't know. I'm so into smushes. Just me. Cool. Oh, it's not just me? I it would have been cool, but the fact that you guys are into it too makes me feel extra better. All right. I like the streaks. Some people isn't their jam. What do you guys think? Oop. Sorry about all of that. Drag is cool. I can do a drag. I've got a couple more coasters. Let's just put out the rest of this white just in this. So it'll just fill in the other bits. A bit of breakfast at Tiffany's left. We can put that in there. Not to put too much motion in this. I don't want the colors mixing together. All right, let's do it. Not enough. Interesting concept. A quad smush. So all the colors are kind of coming in on different angles. So I did a smush on each side. And that's how it turned out. Oh my goodness. Any more times? Quad smush idea. I'm gonna see what all I can 
do to make another one of those. Just to test the theory that it is a cool idea. Because I could be wrong. I've been wrong like twice. Could have been three times. I don't know. Could be wrong about that too. Okay. So we're going to smush the whole thing so that there's something in the middle. It looks like this. We're going to do the other side. Now it looks like this. But now I still have this area that's not right and then a patch down here as well. So we need to do something like that. And then something with that. I think it's really neat because you can see like this line here that's from a different angle of smush. And so ultimately I would love to do like all four ways, something different. And so it looks kind of like a patchwork piece of art, if that makes any sense at all. Seriously, I've got two left. I'm going to just push all of this over here so that I can use a pile of resin and not just a little pocket. Okay. New t-shirt, quad smash, agreed. Let's get the center in there. And that beautiful brown's popping through right there. I'm gonna do this last corner. not mad at it at all. I love this like flipping fade right here. Ooh. And where this bit right here is kind of translucent so you can see the movement of the white under the movement of the blue. It's not going to focus now because I'm talking about it. There it goes. I'm going to put this right here. I agree. I think the posters are going to be rad. What else do I have over here? I do have some brown left. Okay. Never, ever would I have thought I would be like, do we have any more brown to add into my ocean color palette? Not ever. Stranger Things, though. Okay. That brown just makes a great dark color without having to commit to black, you know? Sometimes using a black is kind of just too abrasive for a piece. So having a nice deep brown, as long as it fits with your, you know, whatever flow you're going for. I would use these colors again. I am pleasant surprised. I'm going to leave out the peach, beige, aqua, aqua, nope, apricot. Yeah. Digging it. Even this secondary yellowy, greeny color that I would not want to use ever in anything ever seems to work in this. You know what I mean? I'm saying?
feel oddly guilty leaving any of this color just on there. Nope. I mean, how fun. Took a second, one second to do. I'm gonna drill a hole in this, sell it as a Christmas ornament with a year vinyl on it, $5. All with something I was gonna throw away anyways. All right, let's heat this beast up one more time. I'll show you what the final everything looks like. All the coasters. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and double dip these edges because we can and they're barren. Much better. Much better. Right. I'm gonna take these gloves off. Give you guys some close up action of the everything. Let's go on an adventure. Mm. Okay. So this piece hasn't really changed that much. There are some cells coming up in some strange areas, but not mad at them. Not mad at any of the action. I'm so glad, Evelyn. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day, Gail. I appreciate your donation super much. Some of our coasters. I also want to do one with the Breakfast at Tiffany's, Dark Storm, and White because I think that alone looks really nice. I wanna do more stuff with this brown. I think I may have one in stock, but I'll start carrying more of it because I am now realizing that it's amazing. So the reason why I'm getting cells now is because of the base tints being on the bottom ultimately at this point. All right, you guys, I gotta go. I got a case of resin art in. I'm going to post it on the channel. If you want to join our class, it's May 13th here in Dallas. And we're going to do oceans for real and geodes like this one. If you want to know in person how to do a geoid like this, sign up from a class. Um, I have all these pigments for sale on my website. If I run out of the Illuminolite Brown, you can get it from RK3 Designs. Um and something we'll be back tomorrow at 6 p.m central i do have a sale going on i believe today either today or tomorrow is the last day for the code restock on the website um, for 15 percent off i have to go put resin art into inventory so be kind to one another because you never know what someone's going through and always remember we do the tests so Bobos don't have to. All right. Well, just show your booty. That's fine. Whatever. Y'all have an awesome day, and we'll see you guys tomorrow, 6 p.m. Central. Bye. Say bye. You said bye. I know it.